Okay, today is January 16, 2012. Chapter 8 review. Question 12 is a three dimensional shape. So this triangle here is actually vertical, this part, while this triangle here is flat against the ground. That's why this is a right angle, but doesn't really look like it. If you look at it two dimensionally, it doesn't make any sense. I want you to think of the top triangle as being rising from the ground, okay? This is the only part of that triangle that touches the ground. And in fact, let's try to make that clear. Yellow is touching the ground. Okay? Green is risen from the ground. Uh, oh, jeez. Neither of those Let's try it. Oh, oh, oh. Boom. Okay. So, the question is asking us, because this is a peninsula here, and this is a rock rising out of the ground, so here's the height of our rock, okay? They want to know what the height of this is, so this is our x. We need to find that side of the risen triangle. Now, in order to do that, we have to find the common side of the two triangles. What side is common here? From what I've named the angles A, B, C, and D. Remember, relating to sides, what side is common? A. Remember, A is always opposite of his angle. Sorry, not A. Every side has the same letter of the opposite angle, just in lowercase. So side A is the common side. So what that means is that's the side of the triangle I'm going to try to find so that I have more information about this one. As of right now, I only have two angles. I don't have enough info to solve it. Okay. So, I need to find this common side. I could use cosine law to solve this. We don't know if this is right angle or not. Okay. But there's a quicker way. I could set up sine law. How do I find what this angle is here? That's right. I have the measurement of two of them, so I'm going to subtract two of them from 180. This will give us 26. Seven, what's that going to give us? Whoops. That is nine. Zero, six. Sixty-nine. Okay. So that is sixty-nine degrees, that one. Now that I have that, I can set up our sine law. Okay, I have a complete ratio. So we're going to set up sine law right now. Let's bring this over. Okay, so we have A, B, and D in this case for the triangle that's on the ground. So all we're just going to call C, D instead, okay? So when we go to plug this in, sine 57, A is what we're looking for. Sine 54, we don't know the measurement of B. And sine 69, I don't know why I chose to write it so close to that, over 100. Now because we're trying to find side A, we're going to drop that part of the equation out. We don't really need it. So we're left with sine 57 divided by A is equal to sine 69 divided by 100. Thank you for pointing that out. This is 51. I guess it's because of that part there. Oh, so then that's not 69. That is 75. So that changes it immensely. Thank you for pointing that out. So because that's 51, this is 75 instead. Okay. So now we're trying to isolate A. So the first thing I'm going to do is cross multiply to get rid of our fractions. We only have numbers on the top on each side. So with that, we have 100 multiplied by sine 51. which is equal to sine 75 times our A, okay? Again, we got to get A by itself, so we're going to move sine 75 to the other side. I'm left with 100 times sine 51 is equal to A divided by sine 75. 
Okay? We'll put that in our calculator. Sine 51 times 100 gives us 77.71 divided by sine 57. Sorry, 75. I kept wanting to say 57 the whole time. All right. 0 0.965. So, 0. Point, I'm just going to write that on the side here. This is 0 0.965. So now we know that 77.71 divided by 0 0.965. 80.5. So our common side of that triangle is 80.5 meters. So the triangle that rises into the air, the base of that triangle is 80.5 meters. Now, remember the goal was to find side x. I have this angle. I actually technically could solve this one too because this is a 90 degree angle. I have the adjacent and I'm looking for the opposite side. I can use tangent ratio because this is a right angle triangle. So we're going to use tangent to solve the second part of this. I don't know, I just went away from that. I do not remember the numbers. I believe it is 1041. Yeah. Is equal to, we're looking for the opposite. Oh, and we have the adjacent is 80.5. I need to move 80.5 to the other side of the equation. So when we do that, we'll have 1041 times 80. 0.5 is equal to x. We're going to plug this in. 41 tangent times 80.5. 69.97, which is approximately 70 meters. So this cliff is approximately 70 meters tall. All right, this is question 11 from your practice test, okay? It's strictly a word problem. They've given you no, no diagram. It says that Tess was flying from Toronto to Hamilton at night. She noticed that her heading indicator was malfunctioning and decided to check her position. She called Hamilton Tower and St. Catherine's Radio, knowing that the stations were 50 kilometers apart. Okay. So right there, they've given us some information. Hamilton Tower, okay, so let's say here's the tower. This is Hamilton Tower. And St. Catherine's Radio. So here's our radio tower. We know that they are 50 kilometers apart, she said. <clears throat> They're 50 kilometers apart. Hamilton reported that the position of her plane formed an angle of 65 degrees. So let's say this is her plane here. The angle from Hamilton Tower was 65 degrees. The radio station reported that she was at an angle of 48 degrees. We need to find out how far the plane was from Hamilton Tower, so from here. We're going to be looking for this side of the triangle, okay? We also know, sorry that I forgot to write this in, that this is 50 kilometers. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Technically... When you get into grade 11 and 12 math, this question could have two answers, okay? The other option, I'm going to put it in dotted and then I'm going to get rid of it, is that the plane is actually, let's say, let's say the plane is something like this, okay? I'm just using space right now. And we could say that this is 65 and this is 48. So you see how it makes a much different triangle? We could have said, well, actually, it doesn't make sense. Because this would be obtuse. 
But there are certain questions where it's arbitrary to where the plane is when they give you two angles. We're only using a certain type of triangle. I mentioned it at the beginning. Does anyone remember? Acute. So if you set up a question where you have an obtuse triangle, that is not what we're dealing with. Okay? We're dealing with an acute triangle. So do not set up a question like that. Okay. So we could find out what the other angle in this triangle is right away. Let's say we quickly name this A, B, and C. Actually, we might want to rename C and B. Anyways, we can find out what the other angle is. We know that triangle adds up to 180, so we take 180, subtract the 65, which will give us 115, subtract 48, going to give us 7, 7, 77 degrees, okay? So now that we have that, again, I have a complete ratio. So I can set up my sine law once again to solve this question. Remember, as soon as you get a ratio, we can set up sine law. It makes questions a lot easier. So our side A... 77 over 50. Our B is 48. And we're looking for X. I'm not going to set up sine C because we know we're not looking for this side of the triangle. We don't care how far she is from St. Catherine's radio. So these are the only two ratios I need to set up. Okay? Now that we have them set up, we're going to cross multiply. So I'm going to end up with x times sine 77 is equal to sine 48 times 50. We need to get x by itself, so we're going to divide this side. We're going to move sine 78 to the other side. So we get divided by sine 77, and then we equate this. Okay. Anyone know in the calculator what this is? All right, we'll work it out on the page. 48 sine times 50. Let's remember that number. 37.15, okay? What does it equal? All right. So... That means, they said round it to the nearest meter, 38.13. She is approximately 38 meters from Hamilton Tower. Or is it kilometers, sorry. It's probably kilometers. Meters is quite close for a plane to a tower. So, we noticed a mistake. This is 67. i got to work on subtraction. So, because that's 67, all of these change. Which means this gives us. So, sorry, in the end, this should have been 40.3. So, approximately 40 kilometers. Two more kilometers than we. Okay, question 12 from the review. Sorry, not from the review, from the practice test. 432. <laughs> Scuba diver counts fin strokes to estimate the distance they have traveled underwater. Felipe uses this method and a compass. Uh, no, I think it's Felipe. To swim 300 meters north from the dive boat. So, here's our boat. Let's say that this direction is north. It says that he swam 300 meters from the boat. What a guy. He then turns right. So that means in this direction, 120 degrees. So 120 degrees is going to be like this. Okay? From his original bearing, this is 120 degrees. So he's kind of heading somewhat towards the boat, but in an east direction. He then swims 400 meters in that direction. The question then asks how far he is 
from the boat. Okay? So, I have two sides, 300, 400. What is this angle here? 60, that's right. It's 60 degrees because we know a straight line is 180, so we subtract 120 from 180. Finally, my subtraction's right, and we get 60 degrees. Okay? Now we're trying to find this side of the boat. Does anyone know which law we're going to need to use? Yeah, we're going to need to use cosine law. So we're going to name this. These are our C's because we always look for our C. A and A. And B and B. So we're going to use our cosine law. We're going to plug in all of our variables. We're looking for side C. So we still have C squared is equal to side A is 400. Side B is 300. So times 400 times 300. And the angle is cos 60. Okay? We're going to equate these. C squared is equal to, what was that, 160,000. 90,000 minus 12, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 240,000, co-60. I'm going to add these together. 1, 6, oh, no, 250, yeah. 250,000. Minus 240,000 times cos C, 60. Okay? Now, we're going to equate cos 60 times 240,000 first. So 60 cos, it's 0.5. So we're looking for half of that, which is going to be 120,000. So 250,000 subtract 120,000. We're going to end up with 130,000. And to solve for C, we need to square root this side. So the square root of 130,000, 360.55, OK. C equals 360.55. Uh, because this guy seems to be rounding to the nearest tenth meter, sorry, not tenth, ten meter. He's at 300 and 400. We're going to keep this a nice round number, and we're just going to call it 360 instead of rounding up to 361. So he's approximately 360 meters from the boat. Remember, these are all estimates. The other part of the question asks you, what direction does he need to swim to get back to the boat? Okay? That means you need to know directions. Oh, my. Okay, so we have north, south, west, 261, we rounded to 360 instead, okay? They're not smart though. Okay, now, I want you guys to look at this. This is southwest, <laughs> southeast, northeast, northwest. We're going to say he needs to swim in a southwest direction to get back to the boat. Page 434, 1 to 16.